Predator engine and get the old cylinder piston out. That way we can make room for the new one and we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison of the old compared to the new. I also do have the new push rods coming for the valve train and we're also going to upgrade the springs on them to a little bit higher compression ratio springs, 18 pound springs for the valve train on this one since we are going with the more aggressive cam with a longer lobe opening. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get all the covers popped off and start pulling everything apart. I'll throw you on the chest mount and bring you guys along. Alrighty, so I got you guys on the chest mount. I figured since it's such a small engine, it's going to be the best way to do this. So I'm just going to set this off to the side here. And this is the part that we're going to be pulling off. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything off that we don't need. We're going to pull this off with the gasket, set that off to the side. We're probably going to end up painting this, just like a car, just for fun, shits and giggles. Uh, and then shave off the overhead valve, real Honda-esque. One tip that I like to do is if you're messing with a lot of bolts and stuff, and it's a relatively simple build like this, what I like to do is just put the bolts right back where I got them from. As you can see, I did that with the side cover. It just makes it a lot easier and you don't end up going through a bunch of Ziploc baggies and confuse yourself with the wording. So, all right. Now that the valve curves off, now we got access to the uh, two uh, head bolts that are inside the valve cover, and there's these two on top. So I'll put the eight mil back. Those look to be about a 12, I'd say. Perfect. Now, well, you know what? One thing I forgot, this exhaust shield is actually probably gonna have to come off. people don't like using impacts to get uh, cylinder head bolts off but this is it's just a small engine it's not gonna matter too much I don't know if this thing's oh yeah I just have to get this I've never pulled one of these off before, so I'm not sure if it's going to be anything else that I'm missing, but I suppose we can just give her a little tug. There you go. How about that, huh? There's that. I'll leave that on there. There's the valves in all her glory. So, whoops. I don't know if you guys, there goes the cylinder head bolts. We'll keep these all nice together. I do have a new head gasket coming. It was pretty cheap on gopowersports.com. It was only like four bucks, so picked one up. Not that this one's bad, um, but rather just put a new one on there, so. And here's those connecting rod or push rods that I'm going to be upgrading. But put that back in there. Put that up here. Even if you guys don't have a YouTube channel and you're just rebuilding an engine, it can be pretty nice just to film everything. That way, if you do have any questions, you can always just run back on through and be like, oh yeah, okay. That's where that came from, so. <clears throat> and here, there is the old cylinder. So, all right, push that dowel pin. It does have these two alignment pins, dowel pins in here. They aren't very tight uh, 
they aren't pressed in or anything like that so just be sure not to lose those that's going to make the whole alignment of your cylinder a lot easier don't forget the orientation either the carb came out right over here so that's all that i need to know there all right so now that that's done we can bring it forward a little bit set her on her back side here like this for this one i'm probably going to go ahead and use a wrench so i don't i'm going to be able to get a uh ratchet in there all right let's get this bad boy popped out you can already tell it's going to be a knuckle buster right here that wasn't too bad actually Get them both loose first. One, two. I just need to try and pop this off. Okay, well there's the half. There's the lower half. Now we should be able to just push this right on out. There you can see she's at top dead center, the piston is. Push a little bit more. There you go. Alrighty guys, and just my real quick look at the comparison of these two. You can already tell a couple of really big important things that just kind of showcase why this is such a big uh, upgrade. First off, starting with the connecting rod, you can see how this one tapers out a lot more than the factory one. And this is all billet aluminum, and this is just a casting. Now the big difference here is going to be with the lower section here on, on the uh, the caps. This one, as you can see, is just narrow. It acts as a counterbalance here. This one does the same thing, but they also added an oil scoop in it which feeds oil, like I said earlier, to the main, or to the uh, rod bearings. This one doesn't have rod bearings. It doesn't even have an oil port in it, um, except for up top here. And it just kind of hopes that some oil falls in there. And even then, you're only getting oil to the one, whereas this one disperses it to the upper and the lower one, so you get oil in both, both ports. So when you're running high RPMs and stuff, you're gonna want as much lubrication as possible. And that's why this is gonna be such a big upgrade and such a huge help and key part of the build really. And then again, for the piston, you can see, note the arrow when you pulled it out, that's gonna be very important. You can wanna make sure that that's orientated in the same direction as the original one, which as you can tell, goes out with the counterbalance. It's gonna be just like that and we're gonna slide it back on in there. Um, if this one, you can tell that it's dipped and divoted, this one is not. And then you can see there, it loses a lot of metal on the bottom here. <clears throat> Same thing here. All in all, it's just gonna give you a little bit higher compression, a lot lighter mass going up and down so you aren't fighting with it as much. Uh, again, in the high RPMs, and I've said it a million times, but it's true, that's, uh, that's what we're going for, so. Alrighty guys, so like I said, that's pretty much all that I have for you today. Got a nice little chunk of the work done and it's pretty exciting to know that now we're just kind of going forward and starting to throw everything back in. These motors are so cheap and available, it's a great option to learn. Uh, just tinker around, mess around with in the garage, just, you know, mess around with it, so. Um, yeah, we're gonna be tossing on the go-kart. Once the engine's put together, we get the first run uh, out of the way. Then we're gonna start focusing on the frame itself, getting that to where it needs to be, uh, so we can actually start ripping that around. The idea is that when we start going to the race tracks, uh, like Brainerd, DCTC and stuff, uh, this next spring, then we can kind of rip around the pits uh, in this go-kart. So we are looking for another frame, that way we can have a couple of people ripping around and stuff, but it's all good and fun, it's something to do, keep your hands busy and stuff, and whatnot, so yeah, on that note, Thank you guys for sticking around. We appreciate you all. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.